Hi, welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about battery cables. Everybody's got them, but uh, we wanted to spend a little bit of time and show you guys how to make them the right way. And we've put together a kit that uses the same components that we use on all of our builds. And we've got two different color cables that we offer. Uh, there's a red, obviously, and a black. These are both high quality cables that use very fine stranding, which makes them very flexible. They're really soft. You can get nice tight bend radiuses and that makes it easy to hide them and route them through tricky locations. Um, the black cable is a slightly smaller insulation and the reason we did that is because typically black cables are used for the ground strap and since you have a chassis ground any kind of an insulation rub isn't going to be that big a deal whereas your red cable typically is positive terminal to the battery and that you need to make sure is always well insulated because any Direct contact to chassis ground is going to be a short and that's a great way to start a fire on your bike and that's not a good way to end the day. So that is the cables. We've also included two different colors of heat shrink with every kit and that's because if you're using a red cable and you're routing that down to your starter, you probably don't want to have a big red blob down there because it just draws attention to it. So that gives you some black heat shrink so you can cover up the very end of the terminal where it comes out of the, out of the loom and you don't have this unsightly red thing at the connection to the starter. And likewise, if for any reason you're using black cable to carry positive current, you can also mark that with red heat shrink. So depending on exactly what you're doing in your application, you've got the option to either mark it black or red for whatever reason. Now we've also included four terminals with each kit. There are two that are a little bit smaller and two that are a little bit bigger. And we found that these two sizes really cover the range of terminals that you're gonna have on a motorcycle, whether it's a battery terminal, a solenoid, or a starter. And the final piece of the puzzle is a little bit of solder. And this is rosin core solder that specifically is meant for soldering electrical components. And with that, I can go ahead and show you guys how to actually make one of these. So first we're going to trim the insulation back and you can see with the terminal about how far you want to trim it back. And now it is important to make sure you have a little bit of copper exposed so that you've got a place to add solder into the joint. If you've got the insulation butted all the way up to the terminal, it's really hard to get that solder actually in position where you need it to be. So carefully, without cutting any of the copper strands, we're going to just make a ring around that insulation and then can remove that and add a terminal end. And now if you kind of force that on there, it causes the copper to bulge out just a little bit and that holds it in position while you make the rest of the solder. I'm also going to use a clamp to hold this in place because I'm going to need two hands, one for the torch and one for the solder. Uh, a lot of times if you don't have a clamp like this, you can use a bench vise or a vise grip or several other things, it really doesn't matter. You just need to have it stay in place and maintain position while you're working. So with most soldering that you've done in the past, you may have been using a soldering iron, but that won't have enough power or heat for this application because this is a heavy wire and a, and a very um, heavy terminal. So we're gonna use a plumber's propane torch. Um, it's available at any Home Depot or Home Improvement Center, or you probably even have one floating around in the closet somewhere. So go ahead and get that fired up. Now I can show you, I've got the flame lit and now I'm going to back that off carefully so that I've got a little bit smaller flame. It makes it easier to control the heat and just a little bit easier to do this operation. So now with our, with our flame dialed down to about the minimum that this torch can do, I'm going to introduce it. Now I'm just going to heat the terminal. And if you're able to see it in the video, there's a point where the tinning on this terminal will actually transition. You can see it kind of climb up the terminal and that's where it's transitioning from solid to liquid. And once it's transitioned, I can start to add the solder. Now I'm carefully adding that right to the back of the joint and keeping the heat forward. And I just keep adding solder until it starts to puddle up on the bottom. Now I can remove the heat and there's still enough left. I can keep adding the solder until it starts to solidify. Yep, and right there, it won't take any more. And that's gonna be a nice tight joint. 
You just use the torch on this. It's really hot. Don't touch it. You're going to want to wait and let that cool for a minute. And while you're waiting for that, you can prepare your heat shrink. I'm going to assume that I'm doing a battery terminal that's going to be hidden. So I'm going to mark this with red. I can see I want to use about that much heat shrink. So this can be slid over into position. And then with a hot gun, you can shrink that down. So we got that one done. Now you can go ahead and connect this to whatever it goes to, if it's the battery, starter, solenoid, whatever, and then route the cable where it needs to go, trim it to length, and then make up the other end, the same that we just did this one. Now there is one good part about having a few extra parts with this kit, and that is you can use one of the, the terminal sizes that isn't what you need for your application as a practice run. Go ahead and go through the whole soldering process, practice controlling the heat, adding the solder, making sure you get it right and you're comfortable with it before you actually use the parts that you need for your bike. Um, again, we're always here to answer questions. If you have any problems with your application, give us a phone call, send us an email. We're always happy to help. So with that, thanks for watching.